G'day, Wandering Mind 42. I'm afraid I've got a little problem with your argument. Not so much with the top half. However, let's look at the situation if global warming is true, but no action is taken. You say the climate might reach a tipping point with climate destabilizations, environmental, political, social and public health disasters. Well, that's not actually what the IPCC is predicting. Their latest report says there might be 2 degrees Celsius rise in temperature and 200 millimetres sea level rise over the next century. The Al Gore type disaster scenarios, for example, metres of sea level rise caused by the melting of the polar ice caps, were, as a British judge recently ruled, never going to happen or at least not for millennium. But you might say, even if the probability of disaster is very low, we have to be safe. We have to be precautionary. Well, what's wrong with that? Let me tell you what's wrong. If global warming is true, you say that we would have saved our cookies if we take action. We would have eliminated the risk. Well, not quite. Because you see, even if the Kyoto Protocol is implemented in full, they admit that this will not eliminate any supposed effects of global warming. All it will do is postpone them by six years over the next 100 years. In other words, whatever global disasters that you predict from not taking action, well, you're going to get them from implementing the Kyoto Protocol anyway. So you'll still have all of the economic harm, all of the distortions of your economy, all of the lack of personal choice from implementing these forced behavioural changes, but you'll still get almost all of the crises, environmental problems, health and social that you're predicting at about the same time scale. And here we come to the main point. If you really are concerned about social and economic hardship, why not deal with these problems directly? Why not deal with environmental um, problems? Why not deal with um, lack of access to health care? And the way that all of the world has shown it can deal with these things is by allowing economies to grow. Those countries which have uh, developed economies protect their uh, wooded areas. In fact, in New Zealand and America, where you and I live, um, the area of forests is actually increasing, while it's poor countries which have no property rights and corruption where they don't plan for tomorrow. Free trade, free markets and technological progress along with a wait, see and adapt pr approach is a much better way of dealing with any social and environmental problems than an incredibly expensive and distorting regime which is intended to solve a problem that may not even exist.